Well, hello once again, folks. How you all doing? So this is the Hellion Class 17 that was uh, donated to me by Andy, along with the Class 50, the Offset Shunter, and all those Intercity coaches. Um, fantastic donation, and uh, once again, a really big thanks to Andy for it. Um, so I thought I would leave this till last, um, <laughs> because it's a Hellion. Uh, these things are interesting to work on. Um, let's just see how this runs, though. So this thing runs really smoothly, it's, uh, it's slow speed performance is really really good, um, you know, trundle around the layer at a very very slow speed, very consistently, um, it's only when you get the, the speed up a bit that it starts to make a sort of a grinding vibrating noise, um, which I don't really like the sound of. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get it into the shed and off to the bench and we'll uh, open it up and see if we can find out why it's making that noise, um, maybe it just needs a bit of a service, hopefully. But it's a hellion. I dread to think. Right, let's get it into the shed. Right, okay then. Uh, let's have a look at this. This is the third hellion I've looked at. Um, this, I'm hoping, just needs a bit of a service. The noise it is making um, when it's at speed. You know, it sounds like the gears are grinding, but it's maybe just the noise this thing's going to make. There's maybe not much I can do about it. But we'll have a look, because um, I'll probably run this uh, very slowly anyway. And when it does run very slow, it runs superbly. Um, but we'll have a look and uh, see what's what. So the Class 16 and the real bus were, uh, how can I put it, challenging to work on. Um, I, and I don't think this will be any different. This came with its box and a set of instructions. Thank goodness, because uh, getting into these things can be a bit of a puzzle. Um, although the instructions, uh, yeah, <laughs> it gives you instructions if you want to fit a decoder. Um, but it does give you a bit of a heads up on, on how to get the, uh, the body off. You've got to remove this little cab. And then there appears to be uh, a pointy thing. Which end is it? Yeah, this end. Um, spring buffers, but these ones are held on with a little keeper. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not. There's two tiny little black plastic keepers that hold the buffers in. You've got to remove those keepers and undo the clips, and then this will come out. So it's all a bit daft, but never mind. I think getting these uh, back on will be probably harder than getting them off. Let's get that out of the road and see if this comes off, because apparently this just unclips. There you go. Come on, off you come. So that just comes off like that. That appears to be fixed on. I'm not quite sure what the point of being able to remove that is. It's not really giving you access to anything. You can see the motor in there, the two flywheels. Right, let's see if we can remove these tiny little uh, keepers. I mean, I guess if you just pull the buffer, I guess they're going to come off. Or we could try and leave them off with a little screwdriver or something. We'll try that. Um, just a wee bit worried that they go pinging off somewhere, because they're so small. If they do go pinging off, we're never going to see them again. Well, that came off nice and easy. And there we go. 
and there's a tiny little spring on the buffer. There's the little plastic keeper. This one's a bit more stubborn. Here we go. A tiny little spring. Don't want to lose that. These hellions really are not for the faint hearted. Um, so many tiny little fiddly things that could go so horribly wrong. Right. Okay. Now we've got clips there, 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 and there that I can see. Um, we'll open them up with cocktail sticks and hopefully the chassis will come away from the body. Right, will this lift out? Yes, it does. Like so. Right, what have we got here? So this is all one uh, PCB, which is connected to the pickups. All the wheels are conductive. Um, and then there's lights front and back, which I'm guessing are directional. That looks like a, uh, an 8-pin blanking plate in there. Worm gears appear to be in there and in there. There's wires here that have been twisted together. I'm covered with this uh, white tape. I think somebody's been in here because they're not even soldered together, they're just twisted together and then had that white tape roughly wrapped around them. Same here. How do we get into this though? I would really like to get in to get uh, some fresh lubrication into the gears and I know when I did the uh, the the 16 and the the rail bus i kind of chickened out from um delving into the, the the worm gears but i'd really like to get into these ones this is going to be a lot fiddlier than i thought the uh, the motor's held in with this little mount that's screwed into place oh hang on ah right so you unscrew that and that comes off all ah, right okay so those four screws undone, these LEDs will come out. So I don't have to desolder them. I think the only thing I have to desolder is the uh, the wires going to the pickups, I think. And that lifts off. So that'll go over the circuit board. Try these wires out. There we go. There's that. Yeah, so the LEDs will come with the circuit board. Actually, these wires are actually quite long. I don't think I need to desolder. Can I get away? Ah, right, there we go. There we go. See, I thought we are going to have to be desoldering, but I don't think we do. That allows us to pull that back because these wires are a reasonable length. So we've got little drive shafts. We've got grease on them, but a little bit more wouldn't hurt. Um, now, how on earth do we get into these worm gears? I think this might be a two screwdriver job. Let me get one under each side. There we go. That pops off. It really is not obvious how this motor bully comes out, but I think I'm starting to get it. So, yeah, I've unclipped that from the top um, and that means it's only being held in by the socket for the drive shaft which is attached to the worm gear. Um, the motor bogey itself is, you know, it's two halves. Um, but I think the bogey frame is in two halves as well. And I think if I can pull that apart, it might let me get the bogey out and then we can get a look at the gears. There we go. So that then comes out. And that side comes out. Does that now come out? 
Yes, it does, even though it's still attached with the wires. I don't know how well you can see, but there's clips um, there and there and there and there that hold this plate on. If I can get that off, I think the wheels will come out. Um, and I can remove these pickups and then I can open this up. There. there we go. There's all the gears in there. Uh, I can take these pickups off now, like so. Can we open this up? Yes, we can. We can open that up. And there you go. There's all the lovely gears. How many is there? There's the one gear. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight gears in there plus the uh, gears on the axles. So that's 10 gears. So in total on this model, there is 20 gears. I mean, I dare say I'm gonna put all this back together and it's gonna make exactly the same noise, but uh, it's been very interesting to, to get into this because I didn't delve this far with the, uh, the Class 16 or the rail bus. Pop that back on. There's no foreign objects, no broken teeth, so we're all good. Oh, well, there's the coupling come off. It's not even simple to remove the couplings on this thing. Right, okay. Uh, put the pickups on. It's going to go that way around. It's going to go in there like that. Okay, that's on. This is extremely difficult um, to try and fit this back in. I mean, it kind of, it's one of these things that kind of comes apart um, reasonably easily when you know what to do, but uh, getting it back together, how on earth did I get that? Because this thing here, so a peg top and bottom, this bottom peg, has to fit into a little hole just underneath this. Um, I dare say that would, oh, it does come off. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, that comes off very easily. Uh, worryingly easily, to be honest. But that will now make that easier to fit in. So that then goes in like that. And then that will fit on top there like that right fit that back in just worries me that that just pushes onto that shaft just worries me that that came off so easily well it's on right we can get the two halves of the chassis on now. Fits on there. And that one fits on there. Alright, that's that back together. Well, that was fun. I've got to do this one now. Oh, now see, there's a, a wee foreign object. A little hard thing. Looks like a wee bit of plastic or something caught in that gear. Okay, now I just need to sort these uh, lights out. And I'm going to, uh, I mean, they've, the wires have come detached, at least this red wire has. I think what we'll do is we'll twist them, solder them, and we'll get some heat shrink on instead of this tape. Just need to solder these wires. Get the heat shrink over. So I'm not going to use flame to heat this because the wires are too thin. Um, I have ordered a little mini heat gun that I think will be quite good for, for this. I'll just use the soldering iron just now. So before I fit the body, we'll uh, see how this goes on the test track.
It works. The lights work. Yeah, I think it's still making that little noise. I think I've just discovered why this makes the uh, little vibrating noise. Not too bad in that direction. It's worse in that direction. Um, but after taking it all apart, <laughs> I think the problem is this flywheel. It's wobbling. Yeah, there's quite a buckle on it. It's going like that. When you get up to speed, that's going to uh, cause a bit of vibration. That's what it'll be. I might just be able to let you see this actually. Hang on a minute. That really should not be moving from side to side like that. You look at the other one, it's fine. I'm really, really annoyed with myself that I didn't spot that earlier. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take the motor out and I'm going to have a go at straightening that up. I'm not sure how possible it's going to be, but it's worth a shot. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll just get a replacement motor. Um, so either way, we'll get it fixed. I mean, I could just leave it as it is, but I just don't like the idea of that causing that vibration. You know, it's going to put um, some undue stress on the, the drive shaft there and don't like the noise it makes. So we'll get it out. We'll try and straighten it. If that doesn't work, we'll get a replacement motor. Right. Let's undo these screws again. I want to get the wires off the motor. It's the red one off. And then that should just come out relatively easily. I think we'll take this flywheel off. Here we go. Yeah, I don't think that shaft's bent. That's interesting. So that's uh, good news, um, as long as I can fit this back on straight. But it does look like that that's been put on and somehow it's got itself at a little bit of an angle. You wouldn't have thought that was possible. I now have to come up with a way of fitting this back on because we've got these uh, plastic sockets for the drive shaft. I can't just put this uh, in a kind of clamp. Um, I think I'm going to have to try and find a couple of nuts or something to fit over each end to protect those sockets. And then I can squeeze this together. Okay, I don't have a nut the right size. Um, I've probably got one somewhere in my shed, but I can't be bothered going to look. So I've just got some washers here and they fit around the, uh, the little socket there. And we'll put a piece of tape over it just to hold everything in place like so so I've done that either end so now I can fit this into this clamp and hopefully squeeze this together keeping it nice and square like so No, it's still all over the place. Hmm, so that suggests it's the flywheel, not the motor shaft. I don't think there's anything I can do about that, unless I can somehow get a hold of another flywheel. Do you know, isn't life weird sometimes? Um, <laughs> uh, when I switched the camera off there, I thought, why don't I try swapping the flywheels over? Take this one off and swap them over. Just... I don't know, don't know what made me do it, I just thought it might be a good idea to, to just try that. And lo and behold, that's perfect. So clearly, this backs up my, my theory that this is, you know, the, the motor's been removed and someone's had the flywheels off and they've uh, inadvertently put them on the wrong ends. Um, but, I mean, you really wouldn't think it would make any difference, but clearly it does. 
So that's something to be mindful of if you're ever taking flywheels off, put them back on the right end. Um, I mean, I guess it's just when you squeeze these, you know, the, the flywheels on, you know, the, the, the brass against the shaft maybe, you know, does get kind of grooved a little bit as, as it goes on because it's a very, very tight fit. Uh, and if you put it on a different shaft, maybe it just doesn't quite fit. Um, who knows? But that is absolutely spot on now. <sighs> oh dear. It's quite easy to take these motors out, but getting them back in and getting the drive shaft in its little socket is a bit of a fiddle. Especially when it's all covered in grease and you can't get a hold of it. Right, I think that'll do. Right, pop this on the test track. That sounds better to me. buffers has come out. They're only held in by a tiny little bit of uh, deformed plastic at the end. And that one's just popped out. Right, I'm going to try and fit these buffers back on. Um, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of black tack on the end of a little screwdriver and then stick the keeper on. And hopefully that will stay put. And then I can just in that place and push the buffer into it. Sure, I have to say, I think the way these buffers fit on is one of the daftest things I've seen on any model locomotive. But they're on and they're all working. I think it has to go this way, I think. There we go. Just give it one last quick test on the test track. Okay, we're done. Let's go and pull it out of the shed and give it a wee go on the layout. Okay then, there she comes. vibration noise. So that's a success.
So there we are, that's his uh, Hellion Class 17 sorted out. It's no longer making that horrible um, sort of pulsating vibration noise. Um, it's still growling a bit going in reverse, um, which is definitely coming from the gears. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I get a funny feeling if I swapped the wheels over on that bogey, it would maybe fix that. But <laughs> I can't face taking this thing apart again. Um, yeah, the, the vibration noise was just down to the flywheels, um, you know, they were, they weren't sitting true, they were wobbling about, um, and bizarrely when I swapped them over, they were absolutely perfect, so, uh, that was, you know, not come across that before, but that's something to, to watch out for in the future, is, uh, keep the flywheels on the same ends of the motor, um, interesting, I, I do suspect that that motor's been swapped out, um, and there's been other triggery faffery going on with this model. Um, you know, the way that the wires for the lights have been cut. Um, I mean, the, the lights are not bright on this thing. You can barely see them when they're on. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, interesting to work on another Hellion. And, uh, you know, to go a bit further and get the bogies out and get a look at the gears and everything. So now that I know how to do that, I may well uh, revisit my rail bus at some point and give that a good service. Um, yeah, they are not easy to work on, they are not for the faint-hearted um, and yet despite the, you know, the super fiddly way these things are put together I actually kind of like them. There's something about the Hellions that I really like. Um, the weight on them is really good, they've always got excellent pickup. Um, they run really, really nicely. Um, the motors are maybe a bit underpowered and, you know, they are an absolute nightmare to work on, but there is something about them I really like. So thanks very, very much again to Andy for sending me this, along with the 06 Shunter and the Class 50 there, and all the Intercity coaches. Fantastic donation, um, and it was a lot of fun sorting them out. Uh, quite appropriate to do the Heli on Halloween, I think. Bit of a horror. Right, okay, what's next? I think it'll be another donation, actually. Um, I've got a couple of things being sent to me. Um, but there'll be more repairs uh, soon, so stay tuned and I'll catch you later.